Guys, welcome to another episode of Unmotivated. We're sitting here with Scott Hunt, a friend of Jamal. That's awesome right. perspective. So, Scott, tell me a little bit about yourself, man. Uh, I've just met this guy maybe three weeks ago. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, been and an interesting was, three weeks, man. To to say it's been interesting, interesting. I, I can't even put into words how much stuff I've learned in in three weeks. Uh, it's been overwhelming. Well, for I learned me. a lot about dogs too. So hey, that's, look, I'm yeah. a dog guy, man. I, I noticed, man. Yeah, I noticed. Yeah. <laughs> well, tell them what you do, man. Uh, I'm a nerd. Um, so essentially, what I do is, and for years, um, I've I've done consulting for publicly traded companies. Um, and, and, you know, in small businesses alike, um, I know how to get things found on Google. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a lot of people that talk about it, but they're utilizing old outdated strategies or trying to go buy links on Fiverr and getting blacklisted on Google and stuff like this. I know how to get things found on Google. Um, I know how to do Shopify, Shopify collective. We know how to do, you know, I mean, whether it's, you know, eBay, whatever platform it is essentially pretty much, um, I've, I've it, it, at one point in time have mastered. Um, I have 50 certifications in artificial intelligence, machine learning, project management, Google ads. I have a Google partners account capable of running a hundred million dollars a month in ads. Um, I've generated tens of millions of dollars for companies on ads. Um, I've helped with, you know, CRM development. We've done um, all kinds of stuff, whether it's, you know, whether it's everything from product sourcing or helping people rank their products online. Like yeah. I even do this for myself, um, as I've shown you before. Oh, yeah. Um, and uh, so... Um, so I think the, the question then becomes, what is search engine optimization? Because, you you know, it's, it's like one of those words thrown around, and I don't think anybody knows. And let me be very correct. clear, I have no damn clue either. So I'm asking, sure. as a person who wants to learn, what is SEO? Sure, good. And how important is it? Oh, it's extremely important. Whether you're a local business or whether you're a national business that doesn't really have a local presence, getting found on the number one search engine in the world, Google, is highly important. And, and there's also other types of SEO. You've got, a, you know, for example, app search optimization. So if you're in an app, you need to get your app to the top. I've done app search optimization. I've done SEO. So SEO essentially is how do you rank higher, whether it's Bing, whether it's Google, how do I rank higher for whatever keywords or whatever traffic that I want to drive to my website or to my online service or to my products? How do I get found? How do I find, how do I target a customer that's going to make a decision? How do I take them to that decision and make a purchase or book a call, whatever that might be? Now, SEO, a lot of people confuse SEO with Google Ads. It's not the same. SEO is how, I, how people find you organically. So if you go type in, you know, I can give you a host of things you can go type in now and you can find me, right? Um, and the cool part about that is, for example, in, you know, real estate, I, I mean, I generate ridiculous amount of leads and closings. Why? Because I ranked myself on a free website that you shouldn't even be able to SEO optimize that I didn't pay to run one ad for and outranked and outranked, you know, companies like Berkshire Hathaway mm. on Google. Sheesh. And then, you know, and I've done the same with whether I, I and I even ranked on advertising at one time. Um, back when I had another company, I ranked on advertising across the entire nation. I've ranked for local advertising and local deals and coupons. And like, so I've done it on a national scale. I've done it on an international scale. Well, being ranked is, it sounds like it's a modern day new wage to advertise without having to pay advertising dollars. That's correct. That's correct. It's a science. Um, and, you know, and while algorithms change, um, you want to make sure that everything that you're doing is compliant. Well, what, why do the, why does it change? You know, like you got this new algorithm, and you oh they they change the SEO style. Like, why do they do that? Well, that's that's actually a really good question. So essentially, you've got updates. So Google will push out like the Penguin update or the Hummingbird update. And essentially, what happened is a lot of people were making like spam links with backlinks. For example, do follow. You got do follow, and you've got the no follow with the REL inside of it. And essentially, no follow links don't provide link juice. This is what people tell you. And so what happens is people were going to make all of these links to their website and they're making, you know, they're paying somebody on Fiverr to go make, you know, a ridiculous amount of links that are considered spam. And spam will get you blocked, basically. That's like, right. It can get you blacklisted. You it can, it can, it can you increase your spam score on your website. It decreases your trust value. Man, that, that word right there is a word that keeps coming up. Um, and I myself know the importance of gaining people's trust through truth. And I'd imagine if somebody's just spamming, Google wants to, it's a trusted search engine because you get what you're looking for. That's correct. Yeah, that's correct. And especially like, and you know, and you see a lot of companies paying for fake reviews. <laughs> and, and so for example, you know, for example, another company that I own, 
we had, you know, for example, I've got over 100 five-star reviews. Yeah. But if you go back 10 years, I've been in the business. So while we were generating all these reviews, some companies ended up, you know, some companies ended up just spam reviews. Just all of a sudden you end up with 800 reviews in the last month. Come on, man. <laughs> right, you know, and Google sees this. Google knows this. Google's not stupid, right? You know, Google understands if you know. Okay, we're paying somebody for fake reviews. Google knows they're fake reviews. They're gonna <laughs> stay up for a while, and then, and even sometimes Google will take down legitimate reviews. Um, and yeah, they will. And uh, I had three Steves within a month give me a review, um, and yeah, but all five star, and Google took them down. Just because they were like, it's it's not plausible. Three That's Steves. Right. You yeah. didn't meet three Steves. Yeah, and they weren't all at the same location either. They were all in different locations, all in different IP locations, all in different cities um, that I actually did work for. And I, I, you know, I was like, hey, I could send you guys a copy of this contract. <laughs> and they're like, nope, sorry. I was like, you know, I talked to them. They said that I could send it to you. They're so like, when so then when going back, what got you into you know what what intrigues you about search? I mean, because this is what we discussed, but you said, man, this dude's a search engine specialist. And I always just thought it was ridiculous, like ludicrous, because like, it doesn't seem real. It doesn't. It, it doesn't. doesn't and, seem every, real. and they always want to tell you about some secret sauce, right? Everybody, <laughs> they always want to make it seem like some secret sauce. There are things that I have done, and there are things that I have invented and learned along the way. I've even taught classes. I had CEOs. We rented a t uh, top floor of a skyscraper, and I had CEOs from all over the country flying in, bringing in their teams of people to come learn from me while I'm teaching this stuff. And I called it, uh, what is it? get found class 801 mm. and uh anyway so i would show people tools and free tools and, and ways that they could set up the structure of their website and it doesn't matter whether it's a product it could be a product it could be you know it could be a service you might be for example i, I had uh, uh one company that i was working with and i ranked him you know for plano roofing and he paid multiple other companies and could not rank for plano roofing and he did it for like 10 years and couldn't rank seriously i've done you know whether it's a roofing company in dallas or whether you know, it's a, you know, a garage door repair company in Lubbock. I mean, hell, this is another one that I did. I did this one and I didn't, and I didn't even touch his website. Watch this. Look at this. Hold on. Guys, the search engine thing is, is, it's like uh, somebody waving a wand and boom here, it, you know, there it appears. So, you know, what I've learned from Scott over the, the, the course of the past few weeks is I still don't know what the hell's going on. <laughs> no, man. Yeah, you no, do. I'm, I'm learning. I'm so you learning. see this guy who's number one right here? Yeah. I just put in garage door repair Lubbock TX, Texas. This is the number one search for garage doors in Lubbock. GK Garage Doors. His name's Gerard Kelly. Mm -hmm. I ranked him years ago. He's a good friend of mine. He's in Lubbock. <laughs> I'm in Dallas, right? And I did the work for him years ago, and he's still there. That's crazy, man. Yeah, exactly. So, so that means then the algorithm never impacted his value. No, because we weren't doing things that I would consider spam at the time. Right. And so because we didn't do things that, you know, it, it, it just because something flies today <laughs> doesn't mean that Google's not going to consider it spam tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So you have to think you, you want to think ethically and morally when you're when you're creating links. But you also want to think about the value that you're providing customers when you hit the page and the landing page experience. So what happens is a lot of people, they create a website or they create a Web page. And what happens is, is it's a crappy page. It doesn't take them to doing anything. Well, Google sees this. At, you know what is your bounce rate on your page and so i try to i try to you know set up things like google analytics google webmaster tools a lot of these other things because i want to understand the customer journey what is our bounce rate how long is somebody on the page so for example if they visit my website and they're there for two seconds does that help me or hurt me well you know what it's not going to help you at all right and, and they go click on one of your competitors well guess what over time and a lot of people doing it all of a sudden they're going to rank higher than you for that product or service so you want to create the the best experience possible for the people that are searching you or searching your product and you and speed is also another factor a lot of times um you know amari you remember uh the we had another experience too um, where we were working with another client and they had so much JavaScript on the page and everything's moving that it took fix 15, 16 seconds to freaking load. Oh man. And I mean, I, it's cool, right? As you're <laughs> scrolling through all this stuff is moving, but it never loads. Well, what do you think happens to the customer? Do you, do I really want to wait for everything to load? And you know, it takes me up, you know, I, they're not. And so I always say who you are, what you do, and why you kick butt in three seconds or less. Mm. It doesn't mean you need a simple website. It means you need to get the message across quickly, <sighs> clearly, and drive a customer to an action. Mm. 
Mm -hmm. right? Whether it's a product, whether it's a service. You want to be as informative as possible. If they want to read more about it, let them read more. And I was going to ask you, there was a trick to it. You just you just gave them a trick. I did. <laughs> I did. I threw some nuggets out there. I sure did. <laughs> yeah. I now, what, is there a way for people to contact you? That I mean, we're not done. I'm just like one of those things where, where could they go and learn more about search engine optimization? You know, everybody right now, uh, it feels like, especially, you know, during COVID, everybody was drop shipping and, you know, oh, yeah. uh, Alibaba and products and yeah, correct. selling yeah. pins and, and little, you and know. Stay away from drop shipping, please. <laughs> Do not get into the drop shipping model. If you're using a third party supplier, it is considered a violation in, of Amazon's uh, Section 3 of the Amazon Business Solutions Agreement. So, so it will shut you down. So if you if you if you don't own it like if you get it off of Alibaba or you like I think we talked earlier like you go to a store like Walmart and buy it and then drop ship it. Well, well that drop shipping is different. So if you're drop shipping it, you're using Walmart as a supplier. If you're selling the product yourself on Amazon, that's a different story or eBay or wherever it, whatever else it might be. It also depends if it's a restricted product. So when you know people think, well, I can just sell anything you know on on Amazon, for example, and that's not always the case. Um, some items are restricted, and you have to have approval to sell those items. So that's a whole other, yeah. So you, you get barred from even starting the minute you start something that doesn't line up with their ethics. Well, essentially, you have to have meet specific performance criteria, mm -hmm. right? And you have to do certain things to be able to uh, get approved to sell a restricted brand. Interesting. So you have to have approval to sell it. You know, when I'm sitting here I know listening, how to do it. Yeah, yeah, clearly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, when I'm sitting here listening, you know, I say, man, I bet a lot of people don't know this stuff. No, they don't. You're 100% <laughs> correct. And they, and, and they think that it's a lot of times people think it's some kind of secret sauce or somebody trying to sell you some outrageous plan. A lot of it is time, dedication, and a lot of common sense. And <laughs> it, it's it, seriously, it's time, dedication, and common sense. And you, you have to understand what you're wanting to achieve. Like, for example, what do you want to try to achieve? Are you selling a product? Okay, great. What is your number one product? So, for example, I did this other one with, a, with, another, uh, with another client. And on his, uh, this is not a joke, he, his number one selling product is at the bottom of the last page on his website. Well, uh, you know, uh, that's not, that's not going to fly. No. So Literally counterproductive. It, yeah, correct. Yeah, so you, you have to think. You, you want to look at data-driven decisions. Another thing, too, is like, and here's another nugget, Google Webmaster Tools. Because Google will show you what search is and where you're at in that search. This is a free nugget, right? And Google provides people so many tools. They just don't know how to use them, like Google Tag Manager, right? I, so you, you, know, you can do a lot. You can set up triggers and everything else with Google Tag Manager. Google Analytics. I was in beta when they, had, when they first released the beta, I think I had the first version. I did. I had the first version of Google Ads and the first version of Google Analytics. I was doing SEO before there was Google. That should put it in perspective. Yeah. I That's was using Yahoo. <laughs> 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 and Yahoo Answers back in the day to creep my little funnels. Oh, my goodness, man. That's how long ago I was in college, man. So are there, is this a space that you think is going to grow then? Oh, it's definitely going to grow. It's definitely grow because there's only more products, more people. And as we become more people shop more online whether it's a product or whether it's a service people go to the computer they go to their mobile device most people go to their mobile device um they're going to go try to find what's in their area to try to make a decision right um and so you know it, are they going to come to you and you know how many reviews if you typed in for example like you know if you typed in dallas roofing okay well Okay, when you go look at the reviews, who's got the most reviews? That's probably going to get your attention. Well, you know what else you should do? You should also go look at the dates of those reviews. Because if you got a review popping in every day, there might be a, an issue. Not, that might be an issue right there, right? And so even the reviews, one thing I like about Google versus like uh, Trustpilot, and all, in my opinion, the Trustpilot, in my opinion, is not as worthy as Google because you have to have an account with Google, right? Mm. Um, and I'm not saying you don't with with Trustpilot either, but I, I think that Google holds a higher standard yeah. when it comes to, um, this is my personal opinion, when it, <laughs> when it, when it comes to uh, reviews, yeah. right? I mean, you know, if, if, you go to, if you go to somebody's website, I, in my opinion, I would rather have another Google review from somebody than, you know, another one on, you know, realtor.com or whatever. <laughs> Not that they all don't matter. They all matter. Yeah. Right? It's all about branding at the end of the day, right? The, the, more, the more quality content, the more trust I can gain from you, 
whether that's 100 five-star Google reviews or 100 Trustpilot reviews, they're all important. That's crazy, man. Well, you know, I know that uh, I've asked your Marcus before about, you know, even like Yelp, companies like Yelp, the, the review or the comments or the pictures. Correct. Those things impact uh, choices. They do. Huge. 100%. So the review technically changed everything. Correct. Well, and, you know, I built software a long time ago that utilized, uh, and I'm not recommending any software anymore um, that does this, but I built my own software years ago, like you're talking over probably 12 years ago now, that did Google, that, that helped companies generate Google reviews and online reviews on over 50 platforms. Mm. Um, and so I, I, I like that because a single star increase can actually increase your revenue by more than 10%. In some studies we did, we saw over 15%, just by a single star increase. And that's that's in your top line. Correct. We did it for dealerships. We literally sent this thing off to car dealerships, and we would have finance managers using it, um, their salespeople using it, if people were happy at the end of it. And if somebody was unhappy with the software, too, it also, you know, it would track why they were unhappy and allow you to reach out to them, con get their contact information, allow you to reach out to them so that you could you know, help mitigate, help fix a problem. Because if somebody's rude or whatever or something, there was a service you're not happy about, if you don't identify that issue, you're going to repeat that, mm -hmm. right? And you can't fix it. And there might be a way to fix it and, you know, fix the review and fix it and get that client coming back to you. So when did you know you was going to be a uh, entrepreneur then? Because that's, that we, you know, on the Unmotivated Podcast, we talk about a lot of stuff. I think people think we're just going to lean into the dog thing, but that's, that's a short conversation. I love um, the dog thing, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah especially uh, with mine. Yeah, uh, but, you know, we, we love talking to people like you who live in a whole completely different world um, in comparison to yeah. what we do daily. And you say, man, what, what about being an entrepreneur drives you? You know, I think I like, I, I like having one. I like having multiple income streams. Yeah. Um, especially as a father with, you know, five, five daughters and one son, <laughs> um, you know, but being able to, to, to have a better life, being able to start something from nothing and watch it take fire, watch it take root. You know, for example, when I started my optics company, it's another one of my companies, as you already know, I literally started it with five optics, five optics. Right. And I've, and, you know, and I've got sales that come through every single day. I started in real estate, right? And when I did, when I started in real estate, right? I literally, I said, you know, I started it um, actually with our mutual friend, Ruben. Ruben says, man, why don't you be a real estate agent? I had just got <laughs> done. I had literally just got done um, designing the analytics and some process flows for an app that was featured by MIT. <laughs> literally MIT. Well, I was on WFAA for this, our local news here. And, and it, you know, it was in CNNBC and all this. Matter of fact, I helped them generate over, uh, back then, I think Pokemon Go was the third largest producer, or the, um, was the largest producer of downloads ever. And Snapchat generated, they were the third largest, I think, and they generated a million downloads, I'm sorry, 15,000 downloads and spent a million dollars. On $648, I generated over 12,000 downloads for, for the app that we had. And I was working for the publicly traded company on this one oh, as a consultant. And, uh, but so yeah, that it, freedom, the creativity, the pushing yourself. It, it, exactly. I love it. I, it's, it's, uh, it's never the same. It's not for everyone. A lot of people want to go work their 40 hours, go home, spend time with family. I want to spend time with my family, but the way that I do it is differently. Right. So I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to hustle up for, you know, five more years and then I'm going to relax with my family. <laughs> and I'll have, you know, a couple gigs periodically, but I love being the entrepreneur. I love being able to come up with new ideas, new strategies. When you, you know, uh, I always, you know, define, measure, analyze, uh, implement, and control. Right? That's, your, that's your thing. That's, that's yeah. the three, four things that you live by. Yeah, I like to try to find what the customer journey is. It, to me, it's almost, it's almost a, it's a passion. Find, you know, understand, define what you're trying to accomplish. What do you really want to do? And you might say, well, I want more sales. Well, that's not, that's not defining what you want to do, right? <laughs> that's not defining. What do you want more sales of, right? Okay, you got five businesses. Which one do you want to focus on? I'm not saying we can't focus on all of them. What, do you, what is your number one thing that you want to sell? What is your most profitable thing? What gets you from A to B to help your family more? Let's start there, right? Because that's what you're going to probably be most passionate about. Right. OK, so now that we've defined that. Right. OK, now we're going to define the customer journey. We're not done with the definition yet. Now we've got to analyze what's going on. What are customers doing when they hit there? What would I do as a customer when I hit there? Have you if I hit your page, 
without me scrolling anything, does it tell me anything about you? And I mean, other than a lot of text, because most people are visual, right? They do not want to read. So I had a friend of mine years ago, um, a good friend of mine named Tashar. And Tashar says, Scott, not everything is a dissertation, <laughs> right? And, and I thought to myself, you know what, dude, he's right. He's right. And it wasn't until I got to work with uh, a guy named Scott Richardson that it really sparked. Scott Richardson used to work with Steve Jobs, mm. and he hired me to work with him. I worked in the same office. This guy's like a legend. And I got to work with this guy and learn from this guy and go out to eat with this guy. And we would talk about different strategies and so on. And you could give me a thousand processes, and I can streamline the whole thing. <laughs> right? But I didn't know how to make anything look good. And to this day, I'm not a graphic designer. However, I know how it's supposed to work, function, and feel. Which is damn near just as important, if yeah. not more important. Correct, because the graphic designer may not know how to know that. The yeah. development team may not know that. You can give your development team a set of tasks, but if you don't understand the customer journey or what you're trying to accomplish, you're going to keep paying them and paying them and paying them until you try to get the result that you want. I was listening to um, the founder, co-founder of Twitch today. Uh-huh. And they, he said, you know, one of the things you might do when you're a smaller company, you, you know, you think you're up against the giant, right? Yep. When realistically, it could be something as simple as focusing on better customer service. Yeah, correct. I it, agree it, with that it, completely. It, it, it could be something as small as if your customer service is 10% better than, you, you know, the biggest giant out there, you could create a consumer long-term because they appreciate that. A hundred percent. They I appreciate had to, that personal touch. There's a reason why when you step into a Lexus dealership, yeah. they treat you the way you do. There's a reason why when you step into a Porsche dealership <laughs> or an Aston Martin dealership, they don't treat you the same. No. They, they know you get You're You're 100% correct. <laughs> it's like this Lamborghini don't got commercials for a reason. Yeah, I, I, you, they don't need them. <laughs> you know? <laughs> at all, at all. So what would be some yeah. of the words of encouragement that you'd give some of those people out there that are trying to start um, or just be a little bit better at life too, man? Those two things we like to lean into. Uh, we get a lot of starter packs. People, you know, young on the dog side, hey man, I really want to get involved. Suddenly, so I said, "Well, what's your plan, man? You know, what you, what, what do you really want to do business wise?" I like it. Define, that, define. Look. So some people say define, measure, analyze, implement, control. Some people say define, measure, analyze, improve, control. That's under Sig Sigma. Um, and I like, so I like, I like both. Okay, um, define what you really want to do. What is it that you want to do? What is, is it the life that you want to live? Is it taking vacations with your family? Is it, you know, do you want more money? Are you tired of working that second job and you finally got, or the third job or whatever it is, you want to spend more time with your family? Okay, then what are we going to do? How, what are we going to do? What, is, what are the action steps that we need to go forward? So define what you want to do. What is it? That requires honesty too, though. It you does, know. it does. It some requires people a lot of unfortunately honesty. can't tell themselves, I'm like, oh, you just want some money. Yeah, well, I think you'd be like this. Well, why don't you go get some money? There's no opportunity. You, you, you'll hate yourself after you get it, but like find something bigger, man. And because you're not solving a problem, you're creating one. Believe it or not. That's yeah. And the more you sit in an environment where you're you're wasting time, <laughs> or you know, because time is ticking. Oh yeah, it's right? undefeated. That's right. You, you can't beat it. And so you know, so when I when, in in Six Sigma, they say define, measure, analyze, impl improve, control, and. So m when I think of improve, I think of improve the user process, improve the website, but it also could be improve yourself. You know, from a healthcare standpoint, one of the goals is always to improve patient outcomes. That's right. Um, through improving patient care. Correct. And you go, how do we do that? Well, it's got to be data driven, but also the, co the consumer side of it is how do we make them feel when they come in with a problem and they're uncertain about life? Well, then it goes back to prevention and education. So uh, when we build the human health side, I've, I've lived there for so long, I was like, I think I could do it faster with dogs because yeah. it is growing. Yeah, the oh, market I agree. Is, I completely agree. And, with and that. it's not even been touched. Um, so, well, that's why your channel got my attention right out of the bat because <laughs> I was sitting there thinking. I said, I, I don't think you know, because because uh, my beautiful little woman, she is always you know feeding her dog salmon and all kinds of other stuff. And I was sitting there thinking, I, I I've watched his health and I've watched what he's done to his own food, and I buy him some very high end food, and he'll take his note like the the food in a bag and he'll take his nose and he'll shake it all out and he will refuse to eat and he'll bang his bowl up and down until mom comes out and brings him some like real meat or whatever and then i was uh, i was talking to our to our bro over here about this and and all of a sudden i find your channel i'm like i was just talking about this like what this is like it so the timing was like literally within uh, two hours 
You know, and I was literally just having this conversation. Here yeah. you are feeding feeding your bully you rabbits. Know, and, yeah, and yeah, I saw pig that. Pig feet yeah. and beef and I loved it. Yeah, man. Yeah. It, it look, it solves more problems than we can afford to pay for. To be clear, agreed. And some people don't understand. You know that that short game. For the long game, because most people spend ten, fifteen thousand dollars in the end trying to keep a dog alive. Yeah, and you could have just prevented the cancer and stuff. Uh, well, you know, I'm glad you are are, are caught on to oh, say I the least. I definitely it. caught on when I see him dumping his food out. I'm like, man, that was expensive. For what? Hold on here. I could have just bought. I mean, we could have just bought the salmon, or you know, chicken or or whatever. I mean, I, I fed him I fed him uh, steaks the other day. And he just raw steaks. Yeah. And he just went nuts. And he loves it. Just well, absolutely loves it. And you know, I, I you're you're a service guy, so I see the excitement you have every time, you know, you're around your buddies and people and you're how considerate you are. So I too enjoy watching people enjoy stuff, you know? Yeah. So you go, man, that dog is enjoying that food, man. Oh, he's enjoying it, man. He's enjoying <laughs> it. Yeah. He I mean, but is. you go think about it. The people go to the zoos and places, the biggest attraction is feeding time. Yeah. You want to go watch the wolves eat. You want to watch the the killer whale eat. Like if the monkeys are standing around, that's one thing. But if you see a monkey eating a banana, that's entertaining. It's more entertaining. Yeah. They're throwing the meat over to the lions. Yeah, now that would be entertaining as long as I'm not in there. <laughs> <laughs> what you yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So I think one of the final questions we won't keep you on here too long, man. Is what keeps you motivated, man? I like taking something small <laughs> and making it something big. To me, that gives me a sense of pride. What's the biggest thing you've ever built for you? Woohoo! That's that. So I've got software that I designed. We went to Lubbock. We went to Financial District, um, and we we had a valuation, multiple valuations done on it. They said it's worth two hundred twenty million dollars. Two hundred twenty million dollars. It's never been built. It's hard. It's AI, um, and it's and it works for every single person in the world. On Amazon, and I've never, I've, I, I it hasn't, we haven't launched it. All the infrastructures there, so on and so forth. We've been busy with other things, um, but that's that's a big. I had another company that had a fifty million dollar valuation for technology that I developed. And what are they looking out um, pre? Because this is like pre sales. Like, what are they actually evaluating? I'm clearly probably its impact on the market. Yeah, uh, correct. Disruption is one thing. What value does it add? And then you're looking at sales and and what is that multiple? So when you get into like mergers and acquisitions, and uh, mm. they're looking at multiples. So what value are you providing? And then what would this, you know, for example, like um, what's, you know, for example, when you get into when you get into finance, finance is going to have a different multiple than a, you know, than an auto dealership. It's going to mm -hmm. have different multiple than, uh, you know, is it two times earnings? Is it five times earnings? Is it seven yeah. times earnings? Correct. So in the technology space, what is it normally five up? It, yeah, it depends. It really depends. It depends on, uh, I would say, um, yeah, if a lot of times it can be five up and, and even more. But my biggest question is, is the, the idea, has it been created, right? Because a lot of ideas that people have are not new. <laughs> they're not. A, a lot of them. They're, they're, they're remakes, right? It's like a big pen, right? <laughs> you know, uh, you know they, somebody has a different twist on it, which is good. There's, there's nothing wrong with that, right? Sometimes it, it takes that level of innovation to build something that has not been built. Um, but you know, ha is it making money and what does it, you know, and what value does it add to the, to the client, to the business, whatever it's serving? Mm, so does it add value and what type of value does it add? How much value does it add? How much money can it generate in every, in every year? If it's generating a million dollars a year and I'm looking at five times. So they don't ever go off uh, net profit then? I mean, they, they will, they'll look at net profit. They'll look at your balance sheets. They'll look at your, you know, so on and so forth. They'll look at all the accounting. They're going to look at bank statements when they do their due diligence. So there's a group of people who pre-evaluate and evaluate businesses, and then I'm guessing they also help you potentially have an IPO or correct. take it to the market so you can... We Yeah, we were uh, essentially... Yes, correct. <laughs> yes, without going into the bullying yeah, too yeah, much. Yeah. Yes, no, no, you're correct. good. You're good. Yeah. You're good. Well, now, people, I mean, if you're listening... Um, and you're thinking, hey, I want to be a better businessman, entrepreneur. You want to get in rooms where you can have conversations you've never had um, and learn things you might never know you needed to know. Yeah. Um, but sometimes we think we're doing one thing, and realistically, you learn how to do another. Yeah. And it's the other thing that might be where the business is. That's correct, yeah. And it might be something, a lot of times, too, is it's, a lot of times I see it's, it's pride. So, for example, like, you know, I met, I met one guy. He, he has his Amazon store, um, and this is, this is total 
different. But he had his Amazon store, and he had another company he didn't really care about his Amazon. He had his own product he invented. He hadn't made any money. Um, and I did brand management. We grew his revenue 1,132% in over 30 days. And he's like, what the hell? <laughs> and so, But he's been sitting on this and wasn't getting anywhere with it by himself and paying all these other companies to do it. Well, and you know, and before you go down, could you please, what are some things people should look for when hiring companies? Because you know nowadays there's an influx, right? Correct. There's an influx of people saying, let me help you with marketing. Let me help you with branding. I can help build this, build that, and have no skills. And, yeah, correct. <laughs> and, yeah, they, yeah, they've got, yeah, exactly. Um, so in regards to SEO, I will tell you that most of them are using old, outdated strategies. If you put them on it, how much are they wanting up front? Right? What is their fee? What's upfront? a good price? What's a good price? It depends on what it is. Yeah. Am I am I uh, am I am I doing SEO for a car dealership? Am I doing SEO for a roofing company? Also, how long do I have? Right? Because some you know, for example, I might type in you know, if you type in you know, advertising and there's a billion search results for you know, advertising or local advertising, that's going to take a lot longer to get up to the first page than you know, Louisville Roofing. <laughs> you know what I mean? So you, you get the point, right? So yeah. all of that. So it really, so we have to be realistic. We have to define what we really want to do. We have to be able to measure the gains or losses accordingly. So we have to measure what are we doing? Is it the customer journey? We have to measure where we're going at as far as, so if I'm paying a company, what results have they shown me in 30 days? Have they provided me a report of anything in 30 hmm. days, right? Um, you know, what are they, what are they doing, right? So we have to analyze it accordingly, right? Yeah. Is it, is it getting better? Is it getting worse? Is it staying the same? How do we take the data-driven decisions? How do we make data-driven decisions to improve our outcome? Right? Yeah. I mean, and I think that's still going to be hard. And I'm only, that, that question even in the dog space, I said, man, how do I find a good breeder? I said, man, good luck. You know, because you can get a bad dog uh, sometimes even from good people. Yeah. Uh, and some of them just aren't invested the way they should. So I know in the tech space and the digital space and, you know, TikTok and Facebook and YouTube and all these platforms, there are a lot of people who have all, all of a sudden become master marketers, right? All, yeah, all of a sudden. And, and they and could do this for you for $10,000. Correct, yeah. And, and it kind of reminds me of kind of like in the Amazon automation space. 99% of these people don't have their own warehouse. Mm. But yet they're going to do FBA and they're going to fulfill your stuff. Yeah, he's laughing now because he remembers that combo. <laughs> Right. And I, I was calling them out. And, uh, but anyway, but so essentially most of these people will talk about Amazon automation, but they've never had an Amazon store. Right. They don't manage an Amazon store, haven't managed an Amazon store and they haven't done, you know, ask them what does IPI stand for? What does BSR stand for? Yeah, let I me see your, let me see your net profit of a couple of your reports. Where's your FTC disclosure? What? Yeah, yeah, exactly. All that, all yeah. that. Make sure you're asking those kind of questions. Yeah. No, and they'll be like, what? <laughs> huh? Yeah, um, uh, yeah, exactly. But that's that, that's the part where I think sometimes the people miss is to, let's do business. Right. You say, what's the business? Right now you want to be cool, but the business is going to stress you the hell out. Yeah, exactly. That's why you have to partner with the right people, especially, you know, uh, like, for example, like, you know, I do I do Google. We do websites. We can do app development. We can do all kinds of different things, right? Um, but as far as, you know, on the Google side, whether it's, you know, you, you need a new you know, WordPress website, whether you need to get your Shopify up and running. We know how to do that. Mm. And we've got the infrastructure and the, and the people to be able to make that happen. Yeah. Right. So um, don't replicate, you know, don't replicate the same work. Get it done, <laughs> get it done once and get it done with somebody that's credible. A lot of times people try to hire somebody over for overseas too. They're thinking, oh man, well, I got it cheaper. It doesn't mean you got as much value. Because now a lot of times they'll own your source code, they own your website, and they own your Google business listing, and you don't pay them, and all of a sudden you go, well, what happened to my business listing? What happened to my website? Well, um, sorry, they hijacked your stuff. <laughs> it's like I tell people about their Amazon accounts. Never give anyone your admin account. I don't care if they're your Amazon automation provider or not. Never give anyone your admin account. That's your admin account. Assign them as a user. <clears throat> Send them user privileges, privileges because it can't kick the admin out. Isn't that crazy? Uh, man, I mean, look, mm -hmm. we got to definitely come back. I like the word. You brought up value quite a bit, and I've, I've sold and told everyone around me. I said, guys, does it add value, man? You know, yeah, your goal is to add value every day. So you say, let's look at all the places where we can define value. And even when I'm, you know, I listen to a lot of Forbes talks when I'm just driving and riding around. 
the guy said, you know, if you can't figure it out or focus for two years on what problem you're solving, you, you probably won't be in business long. How many times did you hear me mention define? Yeah, no, d- d- I love oh, it. They know it. I live oh, by that. My, yeah, that's right. My yep. dad made me define words since I was a kid, so I'm always reading out the book or defining what it is we're you know yep. doing or, or how to solve this problem or that problem. Hundred percent and prevent it to, to say that's the right. least. So exactly, my man. Thank you so yeah, much. Likewise, for man, yeah, likewise, man. Appreciate it, man. Yeah, for sure, man. <laughs> God, it's yeah. been a pleasure, man. Yeah, I want likewise, to get one out man. the way so uh, you know, so that you guys can meet him because we're going to build something with Scott, and uh, he's going to be implementive in a lot of our goals and, and dreams, and I think he's going to help us execute and, and get to the other side a lot quicker. Oh, definitely. Uh, but more importantly, he's going to add value, the value that I couldn't add, and, and I don't think anybody around me could either. Well, so. well, we all add, you know, everybody, not one person can do everything. Like, I would literally, no. I would literally stay up days and nights and weeks, you know, not sleeping, to learn this for for multiple years for like literally like i did this every day i didn't go out to clubs <laughs> i didn't go to the weight room i didn't i let my health fail you know i literally went to the hospital once i died from overworking like Shit. literally my heart stopped ee, i went to Louisville medical center because i wanted to be the best at this because i was so dedicated to this right um you know and that's why i've got sales coming in daily and and you know and i've got multiple other companies that are doing the same <laughs> And the idea is adding value to people that we serve. And they, you can't be an expert in everything. You can't. And that's another thing, too, as a business owner. People have to be, they have to be understanding. You, you, you need to focus on what you do as a business. You know dogs. Yeah. You know speaking. You're one of the best speakers I know. Not everybody's going to be as good no. as you speaking. It's just not going to happen. <laughs> no, trust me. Yeah. I, I get it. That's, and I told them, I said, look, I'm going to lean into the teaching and communication. I'll solve all of our problems if you keep the camera on me. I That's said, right. then we're going to go, and I'm going to find things. I, I got a founder mentality um, that I think we can grow, and we're going to figure out who needs to be in part, a part of it so we can support infrastructurally sustainability. I like it. Uh, That's the biggest thing. Yep. Like, yo, I, I know for a fact I'm not about to do all this, but if the camera stays on me, it'll work. That's right. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> I'll make sure it works. And then, you know, like, Maul even connecting us and, you know, saying, hey, let's, let's go talk. He's a good dude, man. Scott, yeah, 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 yeah. Scott and, you know, coming here and like, oh, yeah, this is definitely a big value add. And then you calling Ruben on the phone, giving us your accountant's information, um, just making sure that we're good. Yeah. And the funny thing is, is we're in a place right now where um, I tell people this, there's, there's, you know, believe it or not, uh, despite all your fighting stories. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I was wild back when I was a kid. There, there's man. an innocence to, I believe, good entrepreneurs because you're a curious soul and your curiosity uh, forces you to almost be kind because you you want to know more about a person before you have to hurt them if you do. Yeah, <laughs> hopefully I never have to Yeah, hurt that's anybody. the point. Yeah, Look, yeah, those yeah. days are over, but I tell people, you know, you'd be surprised, um, be it I'm now in some type of light, how many people want to make sure I'm good. They're like, yo, Trevor, I want you to get this right, bro. I believe in you, man. Yeah, so, I totally believe in you, man. And, and, Especially and, when I see what you're doing with, with the dogs. <laughs> and so they, they're bringing us all these people to talk to to grow and scale, and they're just like, yo, I just love what you're doing, man. Yeah. Well, and what I like about another thing that you're doing, too, is it's legit. It's truth. <laughs> and 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 even your followers are truth. Like today, there's so many people that are, you know, uh, quote, unquote, um, influencers that have a bunch of <laughs> fake followers that have 200,000 fake followers but can't get seven people to like their page. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, you know, but you, on the other hand, you've got hundreds of people liking your posts, and I'm one of them. I'm like, hey, this is entertaining, man. All right, cool, let me watch this. You know, hey. you're going to turn the dog on Maul, and he's like, and he doesn't have a suit, and Maul's eyes go, huh? <laughs> and, and, but that's, you know, a, a shout out to uh, one of our guys. Uh, he found me on face of YouTube, and he just said, man, dude, I just want to tell you, man, White cat out of uh, Florida. He said, "You know, your authenticity is gonna hold his weight and go one day, man." I love turning and just listening to you talking with the dogs, and man, it's been a pleasure just just seeing your journey. You don't, we don't hide anything, neither. So I said, if we're going to win, if this is gonna work, then we're gonna make sure we don't disguise ourselves, yeah, or the reality of what it is we're trying to achieve while we try to figure it out. That's it. We don't know. We don't know, but we know there's work to do. So, man, thank you so much for your yeah, time, yeah, people. Yeah, likewise, man. Stay motivated. Yeah.